Hey there, how are you doing? Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this fifth video in our series of building a stopwatch application with Textual, I'm going to show you how to use containers to group widgets together in a logical way. So in the past, in the past four videos, we've built a very simple application that uses our custom widget stopwatch. And for now, our stopwatch looks a bit funky because everything is vertically aligned and the buttons don't do anything yet. But before we proceed and before we wire the buttons and before we align things decently, I want to actually group the stopwatches inside my application. So this is my application here. These are the stopwatches. And I've shown you in the in the past that our application will have bindings to add arbitrary numbers of stopwatches. And if I'm having a lot of stopwatches, and if they're going to be all together, it makes sense to put them inside the container. So nest them inside the container so that the container, I know that there's a thing, an object that I can refer to that will have all of the stopwatches inside. So it's just a matter of organizing the structure of my application. And Textual provides a lot of different containers. Okay, there's containers if you want things to be aligned horizontally, there's containers if you want things aligned vertically, there's containers that scroll, containers that don't scroll, containers that align things in the center or in the middle. So there's, we have containers. And you can check the documentation for all of the containers. But right now, I'm going to use a, a fairly straightforward container. Actually, I'm going to import it first and then show you how to use it. I'm going to go ahead and at the top, from textual.containers, I'm going to import the scrollable container. Now, as the name says, this scrollable container is a container that's scrollable. And it's actually showing here. So it's a scrollable container with vertical layout. Vertical layout just means that things will be aligned vertically. And auto scroll bars on both axes. So you'll get vertical and horizontal scroll bars whenever you need which is kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And this is the point in the application where I'm yielding my stopwatches. And I want them to be inside my container. So there's two ways to do that. But my favorite way is with a context manager. So we're going to say something like with, well, not something like, it's exactly this. With scrollable container, colon, and then in here, you're going to yield your stopwatches. And what this says is everything that's yielded inside the context manager is going to end up inside the container itself. So this is a very, I, th I find this syntax to be quite neat because it shows you visually the nesting, right? These three stopwatches, they all live inside the scrollable container. Now I've saved my application. Let's make sure we didn't break our app. Always a good idea. And it's, it looks the same. It looks exactly the same as it was before because we visually we haven't changed anything yet. But now we know that our stopwatches all live inside that container. Now one thing you can do is if you don't like the context manager syntax or if, it's, if it looks very weird to you for some reason, you can do something else, which is you can... Let's see, let me comment this out. You can yield the container as a regular widget, and then inside the container, you can specify the children. So it's going to be a stopwatch here, a stopwatch here, and a stopwatch here. This works fine. Okay, so if I run the app, it still looks fine. Now, the thing is, it's not as nice, especially if you do things like specify an ID. So I want to be able to talk about this container. I want to give it an ID so I can identify it later. And the ID is a keyword argument that needs to come at the end. I'm going to call it stopwatches. And sorry, let me yeah, come over there. And with this syntax, the ID that belongs to the scrollable container is far away from the scrollable container. So this makes it slightly harder to read. And so instead of this notation or instead of this syntax what you can do is you can just you can just use the context manager and you can have the id in here 
So this makes it, I think this is easier to read. So it's clearly the stopwatch's ID belongs to the scrollable container and the stopwatches are inside. So yeah, I'd recommend the context manager syntax. So this still works. It's always a good idea to make sure everything works when it should. And that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you how you can use containers to put things inside them. And if something's not working, well, either check the written tutorial or ask for help in the Discord. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.